Welcome to the editorial page interview for the Orlando Sentinel for State House District 26, which is a Lake County based district that covers Leesburg, Lady Lake, Eustis, Mount Dora, and, and several other cities in that area. Um, today, we are joined by Linda Carroll of Leesburg, who is a member of the Lake County Ex Dem Democratic Executive Committee. Um, Keith Trunow, the Republican in this race, has declined to join us, which is fine. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started with some questions, and then um, we will wrap up with a closing statement. All right. Um, I'm starting with the same question for pretty much everybody, um, which is that Florida has, over the past couple of years, um, gotten a lot of money from the federal government, which has helped swell its budget to the adopted budget was close to 120 million. The governor vetoed a good bit of that. Well, um, that money is going to be drying up soon, um, the federal money, and we are about to learn how much of that um, the surplus might be needed for covering um, losses from from the hurricane that's on our way. So what do you think the state should be doing to make sure that Florida's budgetary priorities are met, given that things could be much tighter next year than they've been for a couple of years? Budget is a big, that's a, that's a big statement right there. And it uh, takes a lot of, uh, a lot of research and a lot of education, but, uh, I think that that is one of the committees that I'd like to be on is, uh, and I, I don't really know how to answer that question because we can't decide how badly we're gonna be hit by this particular storm. Uh, yes, the federal government has given us a lot of money, but uh, how it's being used, we're finding that our state is not using our money wisely in more than one way, uh, you know, sending, migrants to other states on our dime is the first thing that pops into my mind. So I would like to just say that I will be uh, I will be aware of what's happening. I don't know what the solution is, but uh, other than to change our current administration. Well, let me follow up then. Um, if you were to pick your top three budget priorities for areas where Florida should not be cutting, and you can pick four if you want, or two, or, or however many. Where should the state be focused on, on focusing its spending, and where should this? Where can Florida afford to give some things up? I don't know where we can afford to give things up, but I can tell you what I think that are the three most important things that we should be spending our funds on. First of all, our environment. Florida is a very beautiful state, and we have a lot of natural resources that we need to protect. Uh, we're also one of the fastest growing states uh, in the country, and we are not doing a good job of securing our clean water. We are building and building and building and putting in septic fields when we know that human contamination is dirtying our water. It's making it undrinkable for us without further expanding our, our cost to, to build clean plants, nerf plants. And I, I'm not a scientist, so I can't explain all that, but we need to make sure that we take care of the resources we have. Our natural water is really important. We need to put in sewer systems. Also, it's a great job. It's a good paying job. We can put a lot of people to work putting in sewer systems. Um, secondly, our educational system. We need to put more money in education. We have a teacher shortage for more than one reason. Uh, our teachers are sourly underpaid. We are the last in the country. We are the lowest paid teachers in the country. And we have a lot of the highest problems. We, uh, so we're expecting teachers to go in there and be happy and willing to do it. And, I, you know, our governor's solution is, you know, maybe good temporary solution, but it is not a good long-term solution. We need teachers. We need educators, not veterans. We need educators. If the veterans go and get their certificates and their teaching 
skills are honed, yes, definitely. We want to give them jobs. We want to pre perform for them. But uh, so education is my really big on my list. And environment, of course, is number one. Uh, there are there are lots of other things. And I think, again, <laughs> things that we could be uh, eliminating are a few less lawsuits. That would probably save us some money. Uh, taking, you know, putting our nose in other states' business and, you know, buying airplanes, bad idea, bad idea to move people around when we have, uh, we have other issues here. We have children that are going to bed that are food insecure. It, it, that breaks my heart. We can do better. We have a big homeless problem and our solution has been to make it illegal, which doesn't do anything. They're not going away and they're not housed. We have a real housing problem. We have an insurance problem. I don't know if that was 90 seconds. I think I probably talked longer than 90 seconds. I, I wanted to, to follow up and hone in on one of the things that you said, which was education, uh, specifically the teacher shortage. Yes. I, it, it is it is obviously a problem. You've 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 mentioned sort of what you what you don't want in terms of bringing in veterans and those who are uncertified to teach in public schools. I'm wondering beyond a pay raise, what um, what can be done to attract and incentivize and and um, and and retain teachers in this environment? Uh, I think the environment's already been pretty well established that uh, we we don't show a great deal of respect for our teachers. We've sent them into uh, danger zones without a mask and told them they couldn't wear it. Uh, We've lost a lot of teachers to COVID, and our the respect we've shown them is uh, limited to say the very best. Uh, I think who goes to school for all those years to get a teaching uh, degree, and then you know wants to have a boss that is uh, disrespectful. I think we need to do better to uh, in in all. Of all of the arenas to do better with the people that work for us. We we have to respect them more. You know, teachers are uh, educated. They're they're they love kids. They do this because it's their passion. They don't do it because of the dollar. And uh, to take their passion away on top of it, not good. I thought I'd uh, move over to abortion since um, that's an issue uh, that is going to be turned over to the states thanks to the recent Supreme Court ruling. One of the things I'm interested in is to get specifics here from each of our candidates. Are there any scenarios where you believe a woman's uh, right to choose uh, should face restrictions? And if so, what are they? No, I don't, there is no. Okay. It's a, woman's, it's a woman's right to choose. It's her body. It's her life. Uh, women die in childbirth. They die uh, pregnant because they uh, should abort. And to wait for a governmental body to, to look down upon them and allow them to live, no, that's that's not fair. That's not right. Okay. Well, that was quick, so we can move on to, to more topics. Um, I'll go ahead and, uh, since uh, that was quick, move on to one of the things Chris, as I know, asked about before. Uh, the state spends a lot of money promoting tourism through Visit Florida. What do you think about the money the state spends on uh, Visit Florida and the job that Visit, excuse me, and the job that Visit Florida is doing? I think it's wonderful that we are a tourism state, and I think we could you know, there's always room for improvement. I'm not saying that somebody's doing a bad job when I say that. I'm just saying that uh, if that's what we're good at, if that's our strength, we should focus on that. We should absolutely focus on that. But uh, to uh, to say that, you know, tourism is really important, and then pick a fight with the biggest employer that we have in the state, which is tourism. Not thinking that's going well. Okay. And one last related, season. excuse me. Okay. Pardon me. Uh, one last related question. Uh, we've written a lot over the years about tourist taxes and whether uh, there should be more flexibility in the state. Right now, uh, hotel taxes have to be spent pretty specifically on uh, promoting more tourism, things like Visit Orlando and the Convention Center. Other people have argued for more discretionary spending for localities for things like uh, roads, cops, parks, uh, affordable housing. Do you have any thoughts on whether there should be any changes statutorily to, uh, to how uh, hotel taxes should be can be spent? Uh, at this time, I do not. Okay, thanks. I um, wanted to ask about one question that is weighing very heavily on Floridians' minds right now. Um, Florida's property insurance market is in free fall. 
Um, many people have been given cancellation notices and were not able to renew before the storm. And, um, and others are learning that some of their companies might be undercapitalized. Where has this, where have state leaders fallen down in getting to this point? And what should the legislature do to get to a point where we have a healthy um, private property insurance market? Or is there an alternative that you think Florida should pursue? Again, another hard question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, the, the insurance, housing insurance is really an issue. It really is a very serious issue. And how we can solve it, I uh, would say that, first of all, it, their legislature is going to have to get involved for sure. Um, but how exactly it should be structured, I'm not quite sure. I think that uh, if, if insurance companies are making money here in Florida and you know, they say that they're not, but how can they not? We're all paying, I've only been here, you know, my my insurance rates have doubled. So I can just imagine that most people have had that same, uh, same problem. Now, I don't know in five years, if even in five years, I'm gonna be able to get past with the roof um, because I bought my house, it's, a, it's an existing home, it's a 20 year old home. And there were uh, there was some life left on the roof when I when I bought the home, but uh, to have companies come out and and it seems like there's there's something else involved here, and it would take a lot more uh, for me to really speak about it intelligently. I want to say though, one of the things that we can do to generate income is to check people's septic systems. This is a really important part of our. Uh, we buy and sell property every day. Those houses should have inspections. And the DEP intended to do that when Governor DeSantis made that law and, 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 and created the Green Algae Task Force in when he, right after he became governor. It was a good thing, but they haven't done it. Thank you. I'm sorry. No worries. Thank you. I have a, I have a bit of a more general question. We uh, in, in our interviews, we end up talking to a lot of longtime Florida residents who've lived here all their lives, who've, who've lived here since childhood or whatever. You, you've been here a relatively short time, five, five years, I believe you said. Um, and it gives you a different perspective. When you first moved down here, what, um, what were the biggest issues that, that, that you saw that, that, that sort of surprised you about, about Florida and, and, and about your neighborhood that, that, that sort of spurred you to want to uh, perhaps get into public service this way? The first thing that really uh, attracted my attention and got me out and invo involved with the Lake County Democratic Executive Committee to find out what the political climate was, because it wasn't something I researched when I came to Florida. I visited Florida many, many, many times, three or four times a year for many years. And this was my goal. This was the place I want to be. Uh, I've, and I've traveled around, I've looked other places, but this is where I want to be. I'm very blessed to have that. Uh, but I came, I became aware when they wanted to put a Confederate statue up in the, uh, in our county seat. And uh, it, I, first I, I want, I, you know, I, I, I know how I feel about it, but I wanted to see how the other people felt about it. So I went to the county commissioner's meeting and that is where I saw that people are crying out, you know, we don't want this, this hurts us. This is not indicative of who we are. We need to have a, you know, th they don't want to see the statue smashed or burned or whatever. They, it should go to a Confederate museum. If that's what they want, it should go there, but it shouldn't be in our county seat in the same building where atrocities happened. And I, I felt sad because the county commissioners didn't, their viewpoint was solid. They wanted it and their, the heart, the, the empathy for the people wasn't evident for me. And that is really what I'm about. I feel empathy that, uh, People need things. People need to be respected. People need to be, uh, we, we need to come together and, and not be so hateful about one another. Uh, we had a lot of protests over that. And uh, sadly, I mean, gladly, 
it, it isn't here now, but I don't think this issue is dead, sadly. Thank you, thank you. Um, I wanted, we're, we're covering, covering a lot of ground and I really appreciate that. Um, one of the things Florida has declined to do consistently since the Affordable Care Act passed was to expand Medicaid to cover working adults. There is still federal money available for that. Do you believe Florida should take advantage of it? And absolutely. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump in, but yes, absolutely. <laughs> we have so many people that are ill now with long-term COVID, they can't go back to work. We have got to provide for the people that are in our communities, we cannot just keep marching forward as though they're not important or they don't exist. So yes, we need to provide. And I'm going to sneak in one more question because this is another thing that has become quite relevant right at this moment in time. Um, Florida is surrounded on pretty much three sides by water. And it's considered to be ground zero for the impacts of climate change with, with the heat, the exposure, um, inland flooding, all of these issues. What do you think state lawmakers need to be doing to better prepare Florida, including inland counties like Lake County, for those changes that are coming our way? I I've said it a couple times already, I'm going to repeat it again. We need to put in sewer systems. We need to protect our clean water from our human waste. We're growing rapidly. Uh, those, those pollutants are going to continue to grow rapidly. We uh, allow bottling companies to siphon out our water and uh, we charge them minimal amount of money for that uh, right to have that permit. And then they sell us the water back in a plastic bottle that we can't we used to have deposits on bottles. There's no deposit for the bottle. There's no program to collect the trash that we're, we're creating. I think that's another important thing. We need to uh, either, corporations need to have morality and that is not something they're gonna freely give. We have got to legislate it. So it, if they're in fact gonna make millions of dollars on the basically free water that they're pumping out of our aquifer, then they should be partially or somewhat responsible with impact fees to clean up the mess that it's leaving behind in our water. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, um, we have reached the amount of time that we've allocated for this. The Orlando Sentinel will be making an endorsement in this race. But in addition to that, we urge you to get more information about this race for yourself. Um, speaking to our, our readers, um, both candidates have pretty good websites and also we will have our, our great coverage of this race. And um, we just urge people to take a look at both candidates, decide who best matches your values for, for the future of the state of Florida and make sure and vote in this race November 8th. Now we would like to ask Ms. Carroll to make a closing statement, giving us her pitch as to why she's the best choice in this race. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Um, as you stated, my, my name and, uh, is Lindy Carroll and I'm running for Florida House of Representatives. And uh, the reason that I'm doing that is we know that uh, recent events in our federal government, having the Supreme Court justices hand down laws back to the states for the states to decide, we cannot underestimate or understate the importance of our state legislators. They're gonna be making laws that are going to, uh, that, are, that are gonna impact half of our lives, many of our lives, most of our lives, all of our lives. So this is an important race. And I, I think that uh, if people get out and vote and really do vote for, their uh, beliefs that we can make a better state. We can get better. Not that we're bad, but we can definitely get better. Thank you. Um, thank, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, 
we um, wish you the best of luck and we forward to November. <laughs>